Recently in Florida, a competition called the Florida Python Challenge made quite a splash in the news. It started at 12.01 a.m. on July 11th and ended at 5 p.m. on July 20th. During those 10 days, they actually held a snake-catching contest. Yes, you heard that right. In fact, this event has been held for several consecutive years, but this year broke the record for the number of participants. More than 934 hunters from 30 U.S. states and Canada signed up, including veterans, engineers, farmers, and even celebrities. The rules were pretty simple. Over the course of 10 days, whoever caught the most Burmese pythons without using guns, animal traps, or electric devices would win. The prize? 10,000 US dollars. A generous reward like that definitely attracts more people to join. By the end of the competition, 294 pythons had been captured, a new record compared to previous years. The winner of the 2025 Florida Python Challenge Ultimate Grand Prize was Taylor Stanberry, who caught 60 Burmese pythons and took home $10,000. You might be wondering why they would hold such a competition. The truth is, snakes in Florida have become a massive environmental disaster that's been going on for many years. Today's documentary will dive deeper into this issue and explore what Americans are doing to restore their ecosystems. Let's get started. The story began nearly a century ago. From the 1930s to the 1980s, Burmese pythons, giant snakes native to Myanmar and Thailand, were imported into the United States through the exotic pet trade. When they were young, they were only as thick as a human wrist and looked harmless, like an unusual but fascinating pet. But after a few years, they grew over 16 feet long and weighed more than 110 pounds, far bigger than their owners. Unable to control them, many people released the snakes into the wild. In 1992, Hurricane Andrew struck Homestead, destroying facilities and releasing hundreds of pythons into the Everglades wetlands. With no predators and no natural enemies other than humans, these snakes thrived. Each adult can eat more than 100 different species per year, from birds and rabbits to even young alligators. One real-life scene was captured on camera, a 16-foot python swallowing an alligator that was 5 feet long. Today, it's estimated that between 150,000 and 200,000 pythons live in Florida. Their population grows by 15 to 20 percent each year, spreading across nearly one-third of the Everglades, an area roughly the size of Jamaica. The consequences are devastating. In just eight years, raccoons have declined by 99.3 percent, opossums by 98.9 percent, and bobcats by 87.5 percent, a true ecological wipeout. The government has tried everything including the python hunting contest we just mentioned, and spends over 8 million US dollars every year on control efforts using drones, thermal cameras, and even underwater robots. Yet it's still not enough. In 2023, officials captured a python measuring 19 feet long and weighing 123 pounds. Inside its stomach, they found 87 eggs and half of a deer. After decades of hunting, Burning forests and setting traps, Florida still failed. Burmese pythons continued to breed, spread, and consume the Everglades. That's when biologists realized a harsh truth. We can't save nature by killing more of nature. And then, out of desperation, they came up with a plan that sounded like a joke. Release more snakes to fight the snakes. It sounds insane, but sometimes only nature can heal itself but not Burmese pythons. This time, the main character was the eastern indigo snake, the longest native snake in North America. Growing over eight feet long, its body is covered in deep black scales with a blue metallic sheen, glimmering like heated steel under sunlight. When it glides across wet grass, the purple-blue shimmer on its body ripples like a silk ribbon changing color. But don't let its intimidating look fool you. This species is gentle, non-venomous, and never attacks humans. What astonishes scientists most is its complete immunity to venom. 
An indigo snake can take on and swallow a full-grown rattlesnake without being harmed. Its body can break down venom toxins into harmless amino acids. In the wild, it feeds not only on venomous snakes, but also on young pythons, rodents, lizards, and small birds. The very species causing ecological imbalance. Instead of biting, it fights with muscle power. A single constricting move strong enough to subdue a rattlesnake, a creature that would kill most other animals with just one strike. Despite being a predator in the reptile world, the indigo snake is remarkably friendly toward humans. It's non-venomous, non-aggressive, and doesn't even strike back when touched. That's an incredible thing to imagine, especially if you're a Florida resident living in constant fear of venomous snakes lurking in your backyard. Unlike the Burmese python, it doesn't hunt to dominate. It hunts to restore balance. The indigo snake is the only large diurnal, day-active snake in North America, which means it helps control venomous snake populations while others are still asleep. Don't wonder why Florida didn't bring the indigo snake back sooner, because this very species once nearly went extinct. The indigo snake used to be a symbol of the longleaf pine forests of the American South, a vast ecosystem that once covered 91 million acres, stretching from Virginia to Texas. But between the 1950s and 1970s, humans logged trees, burned forests, and cleared land for farming, destroying 97% of that habitat. When the forest died, the indigo snake lost its home too. Worse yet, during the venomous snake eradication campaigns of the 1960s, people pumped smoke and gasoline into rattlesnake dens, unaware that indigo snakes also took shelter there. As a result, they died alongside the very predators they once hunted. Many others were captured for the pet trade or run over while crossing fragmented forests. By 1978, the indigo snake was officially listed as a federally endangered species, the first snake in U.S. history to receive protection under federal law. But by then, it was already too late. After years of near extinction, a miracle finally happened. In 2023, during an annual survey at the Apalachicola Bluffs and Ravines Preserve in northern Florida, Biologists discovered two young indigo snakes born naturally, the first wild-born individuals in more than 40 years. One of the conservationists broke down in tears and said just one sentence, we heard the forest breathe again. But to reach that moment, we have to go back to 2017, when a coalition including the Nature Conservancy, the Orion Society, and the Orion Center for Indigo Conservation launched a project many at the time called Crazy, breeding and releasing a nearly extinct species. During the first two years of life, the young snakes were raised in a carefully controlled environment where they learned to hunt, hide, and respond to predators, all to ensure that once released, they could survive on their own in the wild. From 2017 to 2024, more than 200 indigo snakes have been reintroduced into the forests. Each year, dozens of adults leave the conservation center, carrying the hope of restoring a missing link in the southern ecosystem. Meanwhile, in southern Georgia's Conakoo National Forest, a similar program led by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, USFWS, state agencies, and several zoos has achieved equally remarkable results. In 2019, they recorded the first wild-born indigo snake in 60 years. When DNA testing confirmed that the two young snakes in Apalachicola were F1 generation, meaning they were born in the wild, everyone realized the impossible had come true. A species once erased from the map had reproduced again, without a lab, without human intervention. This might be the part we've all been waiting for. The battle against the giant Burmese python is far from easy. It's like watching a middleweight boxer go up against a super heavyweight wrestler. An adult indigo snake grows to about 8 feet long and weighs around 13 pounds, while a fully grown Burmese python can reach 19 feet and weigh over 110 pounds, almost 10 times heavier. In the wild, size means power. In a head-to-head -head fight, the indigo has almost no chance of winning. So why release them at all? 
because the indigo snake doesn't need to take down the giant. It attacks from the roots. While humans hunt the adult pythons, indigos target the hatchlings, the ones that haven't yet grown into monsters. An adult indigo can swallow a baby python more than two feet long, and when hundreds of them are active in the same area, the survival rate of young pythons drops dramatically. Imagine this, if each indigo snake handles just a few hatchlings every month, the overall python population could shrink by thousands each year without a single trap, chemical, or bullet. And here's the incredible part. Just by eliminating 5 to 10% of python hatchlings annually, the species reproduction rate could be cut in half. Those numbers give conservationists more hope than ever. But you know what? It turns out the indigo snake isn't just saving the forests, it's also saving people. Across cotton, corn, peanut, and sugarcane farms throughout the American South, the biggest threat isn't drought or pests, but a tiny creature called the cotton rat. They reproduce like machines, up to 10 litters a year, with 5 to 8 pups each time, allowing their population to grow 50-fold in a single season. A single colony of these rats can destroy an entire acre of young corn in just a few nights. What's even more alarming is that they're carriers of the Black Creek Canal virus, the pathogen responsible for hantavirus pulmonary syndrome, a deadly disease that claimed dozens of lives in the southern United States during the 1990s. Instead of relying on poison or chemical traps, nature sent its own scaled doctor, the indigo snake. Each adult indigo can eat 10 to 15 rats a week, more than 500 per year. As the rat population drops, rattlesnakes, whose main prey is also rodents, start appearing less frequently. And with fewer venomous snakes around, snake bite cases in Florida have fallen by more than 20% in just the past few years. The ecosystem quite literally is beginning to heal itself without human intervention. But the story of the indigo snake's revival could never have happened without another silent ally, the gopher tortoise, known as the architect of the southern forests. It may sound strange, but the indigo snake's survival depends almost entirely on these slow-moving turtles. Indigo snakes don't dig their own burrows. They live inside the deep tunnels that gopher tortoises create. Each tortoise can dig between 300 and 400 burrows over its lifetime. Every tunnel can reach nearly 10 feet deep and extend close to 50 feet long, wide enough to form an entire underground city beneath the pine forests. These burrows help snakes escape the summer heat, avoid wildfires, and stay warm during winter. An air conditioning system so efficient that even humans might envy it. And not just snakes, over 350 other species, from insects and frogs to owls and foxes, rely on this underground network to survive. Scientists call the gopher tortoise a keystone species, like the cornerstone that holds an arch together. Sadly, this remarkable animal now faces multiple threats, deforestation, urban sprawl, human-caused fires, invasive fire ants, and illegal poaching for the pet trade. Even though it's been listed as a protected species since 2007, its population has still dropped by nearly 70% in just three decades. Fortunately, several rescue projects have been launched. One of the most notable is the Disney Wilderness Preserve, where thousands of tortoises have been relocated, treated, and released back into the wild. And as the tortoises return, the indigo snakes follow. If the story in Florida amazed you, Get ready, because this isn't just America's problem. It's a global biological battle. Florida is only one of dozens of ecological battlefields that humans have unintentionally created across the planet. Let's start with Guam, a seemingly peaceful Pacific island where brown tree snakes were accidentally introduced after World War II. In just a few decades, they wiped out all 12 native bird species, leaving Guam's skies eerily silent. So silent that children there grew up never hearing birdsong. Ecologists now call it the land without sound. In Australia, the story took an even stranger turn 
1935, people brought in cane toads from South America to control sugarcane beetles. But instead of helping, the toads poisoned native species, snakes, lizards, even dingoes. Today, their population exceeds 200 million, spreading across an area nearly the size of France. The result? Not only did they fail to stop the beetles, but they created a toxic empire that now dominates the continent. And in New Zealand, a country known for its serenity, humans introduced stoats, rats, and cats to control rabbits. Within 50 years, those predators turned into expert egg thieves, driving 70% of native bird species, including the national symbol, the kiwi, toward extinction. Three disasters, one lesson. A single wrong decision can destroy an entire natural world. That's why Florida has become a 21st century case study, a place where humans no longer try to replace nature, but instead learn to restore it through native species. They call this approach eco-engineering, engineering nature with life itself. Our documentary has come to an end, but now it's your turn. What do you think? If one species of snake can save an entire ecosystem, what can humanity learn from that? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And if you love strange but true stories like this one, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next incredible journey.